Good morning and welcome to the 38th annual commencement exercise of Rampart High School commemorating the class of 2020. I'm Pete Alvarez, principal of Rampart High School and it is my honor to be with you this morning. I would like to take this moment to recognize and thank all the teachers, counselors, and support staff who have helped the class of 2020 reach this point today. Their dedication to education, the art of teaching, and to contributing to the growth of these young adults is without equal. They do what they do because of their love of students and knowing that Rampart students are amongst the best and brightest. Today I would like to recognize our retiring faculty, retiring teacher, Mr. Don Harding. Mr. Harding started his career in 1967 in Iowa. He started at Rampart High School in 2003. Mr. Harding says that prior to the experience, teaching was the last thing he wanted to do. Being the timid person he was, teaching sounded very threatening. God, his father, had another plan in mind for him, and he orchestrated the circumstances of his life. One event after another, and he began to step into his plan. Even though the, the timidity remained, it subsided, and not too many years into the journey, he realized he was exactly where he needed to be and want it to be. Teaching art, coaching, and life, what an amazing journey he has had. What wonderful people, both students by the thousands and colleagues by the dozen, and family. People, relationships, and events that have found a lasting place in his heart and his mind. Thank you, Mr. Harding, for, for this adventure and for being a part of the Rampart community. Retiring teacher, Mr. Dennis Phillips. As he retires from his teaching career, he is somewhat in awe as he reflects back on all the adventures and opportunities that District 20 has given him. This is his 34th year in the profession and it has been a wonderful ride. He is a Star Trek fan with one of his favorite quotes from Spock, live long and prosper as his motto. His job as an educator has been to give students the tools and skills and confidence needed to prepare for the life of the 21st century. He has always strived to create learning environments that are exciting, challenging, and engaging. If he can empower his students to be responsible learners, self-guided problem solvers that can work well as an individual as well as with, within a group, then he knows that he has done his job. Mr. Phillips received his Bachelor's of Science from Colorado State University in 1983. In addition, he received his Colorado teaching license and also his construction and trades master's in education certificate in computers from Lesley University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Besides teaching various industrial arts subjects within the classroom, District 20 has offered him many opportunities to enrich the profession. He has enjoyed traveling and teaching each level of students from elementary to middle to high school and college, as well as teaching workshops and presenting at the United States Air Force Academy and adult classes throughout Colorado. These enriching opportunities included ranging from rocketeering, woodworking, art, computers, and more. In addition, he was, when he was young and full of life, he enjoyed coaching middle school basketball, volleyball, softball, track, and golf. It has been a pleasure to work within the thousands of students and colleagues that he has encountered and hopefully enlightened over the years. Now, as he fully retires from District 20, his landscape may have new horizons, however, the teaching profession will continue as it morphs into his new grandfather role, and he is truly looking forward to spending time with his lovely wife and kids, family and friends, because time is precious and it has been long overdue. Thank you, Mr. Phillips, for your years of service, and we wish you the best in your retirement. Retiring classified staff member, Ms. Deb McMunn. Deb started at Rampart 26 years ago as a campus supervisor. After several years of instilling order to the school in this position, she was then hired as the front office receptionist, and she has been there ever since. Working in these positions has been the experience of a lifetime for her, always keeping her on her toes. The best part of working at Rampart, she says, has been the students and the staff that she has met throughout the years, as well as the things that they all have taught her. She will forever find joy in having former students approach her as she's out running errands spending the time to talk to her about their time at Rampart and their lives and memories of the past. While this may be her final year at Rampart, the memories will be forever with her. 
Upon retirement, she plans on spending time with her two sons and daughter-in-laws and traveling with her husband to wherever the winds may take them. She'd like us to remember that always Rampart Strong. Thank you, Mrs. McMahon, for your years of service. On behalf of the Rampart administration, parents and students, I thank, thank each and every one of you for your dedication and service to the Rampart community. You have made a difference for students in and out of the classroom. I would like to thank Academy School District 20 for making this commencement ceremony possible. And please, let me extend a great debt of gratitude to all those who have bravely served in our armed forces across all branches of our military, especially those who are currently deployed. I now give you your senior class president and your student body president, Courtney Thompson and Audrey Pletchis. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. Well, this clearly is not what any of us were expecting. Most graduation ceremonies acknowledge graduates, family members, friends, staff, alumni, the list goes on and on. Virtual graduation seems a little different, so all I can knowingly say is that this broadcast was made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. It is an honor to be a part of this celebration, the 38th graduation ceremony at Rampart High School. Graduation season brings an overwhelming intensity of emotions as we are each ending a chapter of our life's story. It doesn't help that we are mutually stacking on feelings of anxiety, lack of control, and sudden change due to a global pandemic. I mean, there are only so many walks you can take to try to figure out everything that's going on, right? Quarantine has led to lots of reflection. It is crazy to look back and see how much we've all changed over the past four years. Going into Rampart as a freshman, the seniors seemed like they were at least 25, and if I ever had to ask them for directions to a class, it was the most humiliating part of the day. Plus, I always seem to be using the wrong staircase. I cannot tell you how many times I planned to cut across the sidewalk outside of the lower level tech wing just to forget that the doors were locked on the other side. Now, the jump into high school classes was a whole different story. Several times I had to write sorry on the bottom of my math test and just move on. Everything about high school seemed so big and scary, but now it was my normal. I can happily say that I, when I go to school, I can navigate myself there accordingly. So now, each of us are ready to move on to the next chapter of our life story. For some, college or technical schools will be your next stop. Maybe you plan on taking a gap year. Others are heading straight into the workforce and some are choosing military service. As long as you do what makes you feel the most fulfilled, I support you. But please do me one favor and don't ever put a chicken in a backpack. Thank you, Courtney. My name is Audrey Pletchis, and I had the honor of serving as this year's student body president. Now, I know this school year came to an unexpected end, and it can be easy to dwell on current circumstances and possibly hard to see all the good that lay ahead. But as a great public speaker once told me, the reason the windshield is so much larger than the rearview mirror is because it's so much more important to focus on what's ahead of us than what happened in the past. So. As you all head into a new chapter of life, I encourage you to rekindle a flame of intentionality and don't let your fervency and passion die out. It can be easy to settle into the monotony of school, work, or whatever your routine may be, but the dynamic waves that you're making and will continue to make are far from monotonous. You all are impacting our world and each other in remarkable ways. The skills we've been equipped with these past four years have shaped us to be the history makers of tomorrow. You're sitting next to future engineers, lawyers, talk show hosts, plumbers, teachers, mothers, and world changers. As cliche as it may sound, I have full faith in saying the class of 2020 Rampart seniors are capable of the unimaginable. So, as high school comes to a close, I'd like you to take a moment to remember all the teachers who impacted you, all the friends who had your back, the security guards' popsicles, the community of Bob for Bucks, and ultimately, the Rampart spirit. From wind gust breaking windows to chickens and backpacks and plenty of smiling, laughter, and tears, Rampart holds countless memories. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for the energy you poured into each and every game 
Thank you for all the concerts, performances, and curtain calls. Thank you for loving each other and building an uplifting community. And thank you all for being you. And it's okay for there to be hard times, unexpected endings, or things to be out of our control. But at the end of the day, your fingerprints don't fade from the lives that you've touched at Rampart. So, this is a final goodbye to you all. As Winnie the Pooh once said, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Thank you for all the good times we shared, and I wish you the best, class of 2020. Thank you. Now it is my honor to introduce the Academy School District 20 Superintendent, Mr. Tom Gregory. Born and raised in Academy School District 20, Thomas Gregory has a passion for the educational process and thrives on helping others succeed. He was a classroom teacher for 11 years, a school administrator for four years, and completed his 14th year as the leader for the business operations at Academy District 20 in 2019. Gregory became our Chief Financial Ed Officer in 2009 and served in that capacity until 2016 when he was named the Deputy Superintendent slash Chief Financial Officer in these roles. He identified areas where the budget could be reduced without scaling back staffing and school programming. He also co-facilitated the Growth and Capital Needs Committee and presentations to stakeholders that resulted in a successful passage of a $230 million bond measure in 2016. Gregory also increased the District Moody's credit rating from AA3 to AA2. In 2005, Gregory was named the Executive Director for Business Services, during which time he led changes and revisions to many policies and practices including labor practices, 403B plans, full-day kindergarten tuition-based programs, and facility re rentals. He was also the co-facilitator of the Long Range Capital Facilities Planning Committee, leading to recommendations for new, sc new school placement and construction, existing school renovations, technology upgrades, and deferred maintenance. Mr. Gregory, along with the then CFO and superintendent, was integral to the passage of a successful mill let the override tax issue in 2008. This resulted in an additional $14 million annual fund to the school district. Gregory joined the Academy School District 20 staff in 1991 as a middle school math teacher at Challenger Middle School. Shortly after, he transferred to Rampart High School, where he served for 11 years as a math teacher, math department co-chair, football coach, softball coach, baseball coach, and finally, as the RHS Assistant Principal and Athletic Director for four of those 11 years. Gregory earned his master's degree in educational leadership and his principal licensure from the University of Colorado Springs. He learned his bachelor's degree in mathematics and his secondary school teacher licensure from the University of Southern Colorado. He's a member and actively participates in the Colorado Association of School Executives, Association of School Business Officials International, Colorado Association of School Business Officials, Pikes Peak School Business Officials, National Association of Federally Impacted Schools, Board of Directors Treasurer for NAFIS Federal Impacts or Federal Lands Impacted Association, Pikes Peak Area Education Alliance, and National Interscholastic. We would like to thank Mr. Gregory for all that he has done for Rampart High School students and staff. Mr. Gregory. Thank you, Courtney, for the introduction. And a virtual congratulations to the Rampart High School graduating class of 2020. I would like to recognize the folks who commit time and energy to make education possible and successful in District 20 the Academy District 20 Board of Education. President, Mrs. Karen Reynolds. Vice President and liaison to Rampart High School, Mr. Doug Lundberg. Treasurer, Mr. Thomas LaValle. Director, Mr. Will Timby. Director, Mrs. Heather Cloninger. And Air Force Academy liaison to the Board of Education, Colonel Troy Harding. Additionally, I'd like to introduce from Central Administration, our high school administrator, Dr. Jim Smith, Assistant Superintendent for Administrative Services. Thank you. And now, back to Mr. Pete Alvarez.
At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Rampart Administrative Team, Mrs. Tracy Cormany, Assistant Principal, Mr. Kyle Chamberlain, Assistant Principal, Ms. Deirdre Mostiga, Assistant Principal, and Mr. Andy Parks, Assistant Principal and Athletic Director. I would like to, to begin my remarks today with a few quarantine confessions. During this lock, lockdown, I binge watched 90 Day Fiance. I found myself having long conversations with Steve, my black lab, and e-learning muse. I never used the workout equipment I ordered off of Amazon with any regularity. Without a doubt, my wife should be canonized for sainthood, for putting up with me and my daily litany of noises, food questions, and random statements. I hoarded pork products, ramen, chicken and a biscuit crackers, and ice cream novelties. Th though through it all, I missed you, Rampart, all of it. The noise, the interactions, the in-building classrooms, the staff, the parents, most of all, the students, the there there of us. I missed it like I missed going to Candlestick Park with my dad with the hope that Crook, Kipe, and Vita Blue could make my day with a win over the Dodgers. Solace is found in these times, knowing that they make us stronger, more united, and resolute in the business of every student every day. Hashtag all in this together. While this graduation may be different, when you strip away all the fanfare and normalcy, yet still find a way to celebrate, it speaks to spirit and resiliency that makes the moment, the tangibles, and the Rampart community all that more special. This year has been full of moments that forced us to lay down our fears and doubts, change our perspectives, and be innovative to realize our purpose. Purpose is a powerful thing. The Jewish word for purpose is mitzvah. This is not something you are told to do. It is a duty. It is something that your whole being tells you that you have to do. Francesco Latoro, an Italian composer and pianist who converted to Judaism, came to know his mitzvah 30 years ago when he visited a concentration camp. After his visit, he began to search bookshops, attics, basements, and archives. He met with survivors and relatives of those lost to find, record, and perform the music written and imagined by those held captive and subjugated to the darkest of human cruelty. This music, composed and smuggled out of prison camps in secrecy and defiance of one group of humans' attempt to control the beauty and creativity of another group of humans, provides us a lifeline to what is right, a world that could have been, and most importantly, teaches us that love conquers hate every time. In his journey, Francisco Latoro has collected more than 8,000 symphonies, operas, folk songs, and gypsy tunes. Some pieces scribbled on toilet paper and on potato sacks and charcoal provided to prisoners to combat dysentery. His purpose is not driven by fame or fortune. He lives in a modest ground floor apartment with his wife who pays the bills and works as a postal clerk. No P. Diddy recording studio here. He does this work to set free the voices of those that may have gone unheard and to preserve an entire generation of musicians, composers, piano virtuosos, the musical elite of Central and Eastern Europe. This past January marked the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, and I am thankful for those like Francisco Lentoro, who remind us of what is true, right, important, and what it means to have purpose. As we move forward, class of 2020, I implore you to take the coming years to find your purpose. It will be difficult and you will need to struggle with it. The world is rich with opportunities to find the purpose that you will champion. So many issues are afoot, which you need to address. Nothing good ever comes easy, and as the old Native American proverb says, treat life like a dog treats a bone. Gnaw at it, bury it, dig it up, and gnaw on it again. Do this until you find your purpose and where you can do the most good, not just for yourself, but for all humanity. Be well, class of 2020. It has been a wild ride, but it will prepare you for what lay ahead. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you Trey Kennedy, Rampart High School, class of 2020, student speaker at large. I want to begin by saying thank you to all the staff, family, and alumni, and friends that have made it out here today. We know this is a very challenging time for everyone, so tuning into the 2020 senior graduation really means a lot to the entire Rampart community. 
I would like the class of 2020 to take a look around you at your fellow classmates, teachers, and family. I want all of you to take a minute and think about how they impacted you throughout your stay at Rampart. But most importantly, I want you to take a look at yourself. I want you to think about that small 14 or 15 year old who walked through the doors at Rampart probably feeling scared and nervous, but now turned into a strong 17 or 18 year old who is walking through the building today, being proud of who you are and what you have become. One question to all of you, can you all think about that specific moment in high school when you got those butterflies in your chest or it felt like your heart was gonna leap out of your stomach? Maybe you got an A on the test for the first time. Maybe you talked to that special someone. Maybe you and your friends were laughing hysterically in a class even though your teacher's telling you to stop. Now think about all those times in high school that you probably made a complete fool of yourself. Waking up at 7.43 a.m. when you showed up to the wrong class and everyone is staring at you when you try to speak to that someone special and it sounds like you're just speaking in another language. All these moments, good and bad, they made high school unique and special. But I would like you to take a moment about what made Rampart special. You see, Rampart isn't like any other high school in D20, the state of Colorado, or even the entire country for that matter. Rampart is a community full of family, love, and appreciation. I can remember all the days that I felt upset, and I had, but I had a whole community of friends, counselors, and teachers that I could talk to about my issues, feel safe, and loved. I can remember those four amazing days where I saw a hero shave their heads to help someone in need. As we were hanging up our ram horns and entering our new phase in our lives, we should all be thankful for the amazing moments that we had at this school. Going off campus for the first time in your own car, shaving your head to help someone in need, but most importantly, finding yourself. When I look at the Rampart community, I see a whole school of hardworking individuals that are all proud and independent individuals that have a very special gift inside them that is just waiting to be unlocked. And for some of you, maybe it already has. You see, there is something established that is in everyone's hearts that is just yearning to be called for. And that little thing is called passion. Passion is what drives us to take the classes that we love and apply for the jobs that we need to do. Passion gives us a reason to keep learning, to travel, and take new experiences. Passion gives you purpose and gives you something in common with others. To everyone, passion is different. It takes many shapes and sizes. Some people may love film, acting, playing sports, or working in the environment. That's what's beautiful about the class of 2020. I see a hardworking class that has more passion than any other classes that have walked through these halls. I can talk to anyone in the class of 2020 and hear them talk for hours about their passion and how, they, how much they are involved in it. A wise woman named Ofra Winfrey once said, passion is energy. Feel the power that comes on from, fo from focusing on what excites you. In my eyes, the passion of 2020 is a type of inspiration that will help and lead and inspire the future generation of kids to come. We have some of the smartest kids out there. We have some of the most dedicated kids that are willing to change the world and the people who have that tug gnawing at them to do what they love. I say go after it. Challenge it, dominate it, and change the world. Many of us are disappointed with the current pandemic. Many of us have lost important high school memories from prom to last sports seasons to last performances and seeing our last friends on the last day of school. But let's not dwell on what might have been. Instead, let's look back on what made Rampart great. We can all think back to our, our first amazing class we didn't want to end, our first football game, and our first high school dance, and many more. We can all think about those amazing days that made us smile and get those butterflies in our stomach. Those memories that we, those are the memories that we need to hold on to. The memories that, we'll, that we will reflect on 10 years from now and think about the good old days. And just when life feels hopeless, I want you to ask yourself, what can you do today that will make tomorrow have a positive outcome? As we move into the next phase of our life, we can remember about what makes us special and unique. Each of us has an important light that is just waiting to be unlocked. Whether you're going into the college, the workforce, the military, or even taking a year off, I want you all to make a promise to yourself. I want you all to make a promise that you're going to work your hardest and unlock the fire inside you. But I know deep down, everyone at Rampart has a passion that is just waiting to be unlocked. Now graduating class of 2020, as we walk into our new lives, we should all be thankful for the past, be grateful for the present, and hopeful for the future. But most importantly, remember who you are and never forget to be yourself. Thank you, Trey. During the past weeks and months, 
Many of you have reached out and shared your hopes for today. While this ceremony, ceremony may not look how we imagined, I want to thank each of you for your flexibility, resilience, and positivity. I would also like to thank Rampart High School Class of 2020 student Audrey Pletchis for giving your time to my Student Advisory Council. Your honest feedback and insightful input have helped improve our district and our community. Thank you, Audrey. Graduates, you have spent the last 13 years deepening your knowledge of subjects like math, science, social studies, reading, and writing. At the same time, you have formed friendships, discovered passions, and dreamed of your future. Today, as you finish the first chapters of your life's biography, we celebrate this milestone. High school graduation is the true beginning of adulthood. It is the most significant academic accomplishment of your developing story. As you begin to write the adult chapters of your biography, I hope, above all, it includes the lifelong acquisition of knowledge, love of country, and kindness to others. Before we look forward, let's take a moment and reflect on what will likely be one of the most unusual chapters of your biography. 2020 has not been typical and will not be a chapter easily glossed over. In so many ways, this was not a usual year. From numerous weather cancellations and delays during the first semester, to adding time to the school day the second semester, to missing out on many final events and activities, you have been asked to sacrifice much. Your last days and months of school together, you have been asked to sacrifice your final assemblies and other recognitions with your peers. Senior activities such as prom, senior breakfasts or lunches, and senior sunset, and final sports seasons, theatrical productions, and concerts. And now you are sacrificing a traditional graduation ceremony. While this has been difficult and not the way you imagined your senior year to end, you are not the first class of graduates asked to make sacrifice. In fact, you can find comfort that you are in good company. Many who came before you, and at your exact age, were forced to make more significant sacrifice. Several generations before you, graduates were drafted to serve and defend our liberties and freedoms in times of war. More specifically, graduating classes of the greatest generation were forced to make substan substantial sacrifices multiple times. First, during the Great Depression, and then again a few years later for World War II. While your obligations are different, just like them, it has been your time to sacrifice. More importantly, it is your time to recover and move forward. They paved the way, and I am confident you will harness the same grit, determination, and ingenuity. It is during times of hardship and crisis when hope, innovation, and community are born. As you begin to fill your blank pages, I ask you don't get so consumed by your individual pursuits that you forget to be a good person. This may sound simple, but being a good person can present significant challenges. Think back to kindergarten where you learned some important lessons. According to Robert Fulgham, author of the book All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, you learned the most important rules of life when you were in kindergarten and they were not about reading, writing, or arithmetic. You learned what is most important about how to live, what to do, and how to be. In kindergarten, you learned to share. You learned to play fair, to not hit people, to put things back where you found them, to clean up your own mess, to not take things that are not yours, to say sorry when you hurt somebody, to not lie, to not cheat, and to flush when your business is complete. Take a nap every afternoon, and most relevant today, to wash your hands often. What you learned in kindergarten is to be a good person. Similarly, when songwriter Lori McKenna was frustrated because her children would not listen to her, she determined to write down her guidance in the form of lyrics to a song. Maybe this would get her kids' attention, she thought. Her song was later recorded by country artist Tim McGraw, entitled, 
humble and kind. Now her kids and the rest of the world learn from her simple but impactful and principled words. I'd like to share a few words that you may be familiar with from that song. She writes, hold the door, say please and say thank you. Don't steal, don't cheat, and don't lie. I know you got mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. When the dreams you're dreaming come to you, when the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. Don't expect a free ride from no one. Don't hold a grudge or a chip, and here's why. Bitterness keeps you from flying. Always stay humble and kind. This is my challenge for each of you. Be a good person. Remember to say please and to say thank you. Stay humble and kind as you climb the mountains to your dreams. Today you are moving forward and beginning to script not just chapters, but volumes of your biography. And as you do, be sure to thank those who helped you get here while you take time to celebrate your achievements. Congratulations, Rampart, Class of 2020. I wish you a hopeful, successful, and fulfilling future. Be well and be safe. Thank you. Please now welcome to the podium, Ms. Deirdre Mostica. It is next my pleasure to present this year's valedictorian and salutatorian. The International Ballot Baccalaureate Valedictorian is Priyanka Tomlinson. Priyanka is joined here by her mother, Chitra Sekar, and her brothers, Akshay and Ishan Tomlinson. In her years at Rampart, Priyanka has been active in National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, IB Leadership, and Thespian Honor Society. Priyanka will be attending Lewis and Clark College and will major in biology with a minor in health studies. Priyanka is in receipt of the Lewis and Clark Endowed Scholarship, Trustee Endowed Scholarship, and the Compass Scholarship. The valedictorian is Samuel Lee. Here to celebrate with Samuel are his parents, Hoon and Jung Young Lee, sister Sharon Lee, aunt and uncle Dennis and Suk Russo. In his time at Rampart, Samuel participated in Academic World Quest, Math Club, Rocky Mountain Robotics. Samuel will attend the College of Arts and Science of Cornell University and major in biology and society. The International Baccalaureate, Baccalaureate Salutatorian is Jamil Nemri. Jamil celebrates his graduation with his parents, Ehab and Nibal, and his brother, Salam. In his four years at RHS, Jamil has been a part of National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Swing Club, and the IB Diploma Program. Jamil will attend the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and major in pre-med. Jamil is the recipient of the UCCS Chancellor's Award. The salutatorian is Zoe Alvarez. Zoe is joined by her parents, Pete and Shannon Alvarez. Over the course of her high school career, Zoe participated in lacrosse, cross country, Rams guiding Grizzlies, National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Sources of Strength, she was a math access tutor, St. Francis Medical Surgical Unit volunteer, a Kids Art Colorado teacher, and elementary soccer coach. Zoe will attend Tulane University in the honors program and will double major in public health and cognitive studies. Zoe is the recipient of the Tulane Donors Award, the Tulane Founders Award, and the Tulane Scholarship. I would like to welcome to the podium our valedictorians. We will first hear from the International Baccalaureate Valedictorian, Priyanka Tomlinson, and then valedictorian, Samuel Lee. I want to begin by thanking teachers, administrators, friends, and families for the strength and courage you have instilled in us. Without you, we would not have grown into the people we are today. I also want to thank my fellow graduates for this experience. 
Martin Luther King Jr. once said, only in darkness can you see the stars. This quote represents the essence of what we have learned as the class of 2020. On, our, on the first day of high school, just like many of you, I looked forward to what was to come. For 12 years, we worked so hard. We dealt with being teenagers while trying to manage our schoolwork and navigate all that life threw at us. High school was a roller coaster. On the best days of high school, I laughed and jammed out in the car with my friends as we imagined the glory of being a senior. On the worst days, when the schoolwork piled up and the stress of final exams seemed never ending, I took solace in the fact that it was all leading up to one big day, graduation. Then the time finally came for us to be seniors and there was so much more to it than I expected. I, like many of you, experienced the infamous senioritis. I spent many nights crossing my fingers, hoping for snow days. Little did I know how much I would yearn to have those days back, the days spent at school. Our last game, our last performance, our last day of school, all passed us by without us even knowing it would be our last. The world was filled with grief, loss, and hardship. The future we had hoped for looked nothing like we imagined. The world around us grew dark, and we, the class of 2020, experienced something that no other class had experienced. We encountered the hardship of a broken world. We watched as the world in which we had grown up crumbled around us. We helplessly watched victims all over the world succumb to a tragic illness. We were forced to grieve our senior year and the memories that we would never make. We experienced darkness. And yet, though we experienced darkness, we were also shown the stars. We saw people come together as communities, looking past themselves and doing everything in their power to protect and uplift others. We witnessed expressions of pure kindness in a time where hope felt lost. And we didn't just watch others take action. We ourselves took action. I have seen my peers reach out to one another, inspiring a sense of community, fighting for change and doing what is right. Many of us in the class of 2020 entered the world following the tragic events of 9-11. We were the stars amidst a time of great darkness then, and now as we reach adulthood, we must once again prove ourselves as stars. We have always inspired hope in the world and we must continue to do so. The future is at our fingertips, and although it can be difficult to think about the future when the present weighs so heavy on our hearts, I encourage you to remember your own strength and the words of Dr. King, that only in darkness can you see the stars. Hello, Rampart. This is usually a highly celebrated part of our lives, very formal, but of course, this is not the case. Now, I admit that I'm too self-conscious to assume that I, high school student, part of the unwashed messes, am somewhat wise enough to inspire others through this speech by talking on worldly topics and generalizing to everyone. So, I'll give a quote from a much smarter and inspiring person, Jordan Peterson. Aim to be the person at your father's funeral that everyone in their grief and misery can rely on. There's worthy and noble ambition, strength in the face of adversity. Of course, thank you teachers and administrators for guiding us through this time, a lot of which was not only about academics. Again, I do want, not want to generalize to everyone, as our year is so diverse in background and experience, but with my limited and individual perspective, I do want to congratulate this year and class for its influence on the Rampart community. As the class of 2020 goes out into this weird world and inevitably meets obstacles that seem insurmountable, I just simply hope you all meet good people and carefully take the next steps to prepare you for the unknown future. Thank you, Priyanka and Samuel. Now for the presentation of the class, Mr. Pete Alvarez and Mr. Doug Lundberg. Mr. Lundberg, it is with the greatest of pride that I present to you the members of the class of 2020. I hereby certify that these young men and women have met the requirements for graduation from Rampart High School and Academy School District 20 and are recommended to receive their diplomas. On behalf of the Board of Education, I accept with pride and pleasure 
the D20 graduating class of Rampart High School. Mr. Alvarez, thank you and your staff for an outstanding job.
Class of 2020, we wish you nothing but the best. Please move your tassel from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. Class of 2020, you are now alum. Congratulations. Have a great day and thank you for attending.